Ask the Muscle Whisperer. Twenty twenty, in my view, can be best described as a year that demanded reaction, response, and innovation to navigate the effects of the pandemic crisis. For massage therapy, the year taught us to take time to reflect upon what truly matters and work towards new ways of working, doing, thinking, and adapting. Through the pandemic, we learned that we need to unify and share experiences and expertise in a collective effort to drive forward change and recognition. It has been interesting that through a crisis, we learned to scrutinize our practice and develop a more professional framework for enhancing our work. 2020 is a year that will be remembered or possibly forgotten as a life changer. A year that provided pockets of hope interspersed with frustration, anxiety and anger. A year that brought us closer together, yet drove some of the sector apart. A year that encouraged community, yet generated confusion. A year that will be recorded as a pivot in the industry and a way forward for future recognition. The message I give to the sector is to look to the self to understand where you want to go as a professional. Use the experience of lockdown to connect with what really matters and work towards recognising that the industry has travelled an interesting journey yet has a long and encouraging path ahead. I end with a quote that has always inspired me, despite adversity and setbacks. A bend in the road is not the end of the road unless we fail to make the turn. Hello, so what an extraordinary year 2020 has been. I don't think any of us saw that one coming. Um, so how has it been for our industry? Well, I think some huge benefits um, have been um, achieved for us. I think in this second lockdown, it's been amazing that us as sports or remedial therapists have been allowed to continue to work. It's clearly been acknowledged that um, our skills are profound enough to really make a difference to people's lives, working with pathologies, working in the medical uh, dimension. So it's fantastic to have this acknowledged because obviously we know what a huge difference we make to um, our clients' lives, um, but this has been acknowledged on a, on a wider scale. So I think that's a huge improvement for our industry. Um, so great. I also think, um, you know, never before did we think bodywork therapists could work remotely or could study remotely, but um, in times of crisis, we have to be creative and we have to think outside the box. So. Um, I think we've all achieved a huge amount. Um, I certainly have enrolled on some online courses and we are now hosting our own um, online courses. Um, clearly not everything we can learn remotely. We need to come together for hands-on work and we are um, interrelational beings. We need to learn from each other in the same room. But there's certainly some quite a lot that we can do um, remotely and I'm really excited about the new courses that we are offering. Um, and again, it's been great to work not just with people from all around this country, but to work with people as far afield as New Zealand. So that's been um, wonderful for me to do. Um, another thing that um, has changed for me that um, has been a real benefit is one thing that I'm really passionate about is supervision within our industry. Um, it's not mandatory, um, although I think it should be. Um, but I offer supervision. Um, again, I've been working with people all around this country um, and much further afield as well. So um, how does supervision work? Um, well, when we're working with complex clients, clients with um, complex physical and emotional needs, I think it's really important that we can go to a supervisor for support around, around these issues. Um, but I also work with therapists over all sorts of matters, therapists who are having um, difficulty with their communication with their clients. Um, I work with therapists who really feel that their consultation form just is not working for them. So we develop a new consultation form. Um, I also work with therapists very often who are uh, suffering from low, low self-esteem, not charging correctly. So I really support people to charge appropriately. Um, and the other thing that I see a lot and provide supervision around is people who 
feel that um, they're not sure where they want to take their career. Again, once we are qualified, we can go in so many different directions. There's so much scope for us and we can really navigate our um, career into the direction that we want it. Um, but again, some people are very clear and others seem to get lost along the way. So I really support um, therapists with, with finding, finding their path or getting their feet back on the path um, and bringing their joy and love of their work back into their everyday um, practice. Um, so supervision is something that I'm passionate about and I've always um, uh, offered supervision, but again, now it's wonderful for me to be able to work, like I said, with therapists from all around this country and all around the world. So that's been a huge change for me. So like I said, um, I don't think any of us saw this coming in 2020, but I'm really hoping for a positive 2021. Um, things feel really positive for me and for many of the people I've been supporting, many of my graduates and for many of the therapists that I've been chatting to. So we're really excited about 2021. I hope you are too. Um, I really wish you a happy festive season and look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm Rachel, hiya. And we're the directors of Jing Advanced Massage. And we're so excited to be once again asked to be on the last um, episode or issue of the Massage Whip Whisper. For 2020. By, for 2020, yeah. By Massage Warehouse. Mm -hmm. And it's been incredible, the support that's been put out through 2020 for massage therapists. And I think that that is actually our topical question yeah. that we've been asked, which is what's the message that we would what's like message? to give uh, massage therapists in the UK and I think the big thing we want to say is well done <laughs> <laughs> we did it so well 2020 was you hard rocked it. You totally well, we rocked, rocked it, it because yeah. we stayed connected with each other we had encouragement people dug their heels in and said I'm not giving up I am a massage therapist my clients are important to me my work is important to me and in so many ways, there were so many times people could have just jumped off the path, but really went forward. So we're so grateful to be part of an incredible tribe of massage therapists. So I think that's our message. Yes, um, and adding to that, um, some of you know my personal mantra is keep on keeping on. And when we reopen Jing again for hands-on work after months of lockdown and online work, some random woman in a car drove past me. I was outside uh, on the street and just shouted out of a window, Rachel, keep on keeping on. So that was like, yeah, that, that's the message it. Is out there. The message is out there. So just keep on keeping on through the hard times and the bad. I think there's a song there somewhere. <laughs> uh, and uh, just know that your fellow therapists, you know, your mentors, mm. um, your communities are, are surrounding you and urging you on as well. So, well done. And the lesson, the lesson yeah. that we learned is that your hands and all the touch is so important, isn't all that you are. Mm -hmm. And our big message to massage therapists and the lesson people grabbed out was diversify, yeah. to expand your practice into something that really owns a professional space. So we've put out a lot this year around self-care, yeah. doing your consultations in a stronger way that people really see you as a professional. We have really embraced the lesson of technology. So consultation via Zoom. We've put together a massive you did an incredible thing, <laughs> mentoring program around how to deliver self-care online. Um, and that has been a massive lesson for us. So I think the richness of our practice, yeah. which is not just the table work, has really been a huge takeaway. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think we always say, you know, sort of Phoenix from the ashes, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Out of quite traumatic and a tumultuous uh, time that some changes come to, to our industry. And actually a lot of those should be embraced, particularly the embracing of online learning um, and online ways of delivering care to our, to our clients. So I'd say if that's something that you're not embracing yet, then uh, reach out and do so. There's lots there's of time, ways. yes. There's so many more ways we can connect with people, which is wonderful. And stay involved and just know your massage practice is gonna be so important in the years to come. And so where we see ourselves in the medical model is, is changing and evolving. Um, and we are, we're really focusing in on that. So thank you actually for an amazing 2020. Yeah. We've been so engaged with our beautiful, beautiful massage um, community and we can't wait to see what happens in 2021 it's going to be extraordinary it's just around the corner get a great <laughs> rest at christmas you all, yeah, need, you all it. need it yeah <laughs> lots of lots of r and r all right lots of love see you in 2021 
I think the complementary and alternative medicine industry and massage therapy in particular will bounce back in late spring of 2021. I feel confident in saying this because of the general awareness of how to protect ourselves and indeed our clients from viruses such as COVID-19. The industry has been very quick at producing information on how to protect yourself and clients within the guidelines set by the government for therapists through its membership organisations such as the Federation of Holistic Therapists, Think Tree Hub and Complementary Therapists Association. Therapists should not hesitate about contacting their relevant organisation if they have any questions about restarting their business. Professional associations will generally have highly informative online guides regarding business and marketing, and many now offer short online courses at reasonable prices or some for free. They are here to help, and that is what you pay for, support. The lesson that I have learned from 2020 is that we should never take clients for granted. When it is busy, you may have a full sense of security that clients will be rebooking for the lifetime of your practice. But now we know that something like COVID-19 can come along and devastate your client base overnight. I think we all need to look for new clients in 2021 and this takes marketing and networking within the industry. I would advise therapists to contact other local massage therapists, to set up networking groups, to work together on marketing. Many hands can achieve much more than one. Massage therapy will bounce back, but probably not as we have known it. Corporate massage, for instance, was a thriving business in cities like London and Manchester. This business will come back eventually, but therapists may have to change their approach. I think large businesses have realised that staff working from home several days a week will not have a detrimental effect on their business in the future. Therapists will have to maybe go to the same company twice a week instead of just once to cover all the staff they usually do and have longer breaks in between clients to assure the company that they are cleaning and using the correct PPE for each client. I hope this is helpful. Firstly, I hope that you're not too stressed out with the festive season. Um, and um, in addition to getting ready, uh, you know, for Christmas, it's a great time to start to think about what you want to achieve um, next year in 2021, in the coming year. Now, reflecting on this year, we've seen um, a lot of challenges in our industry, um, namely because those of us in the business of touch um, have had the pain of social distancing, so we haven't been able to regularly see our clients. So it's it's cut our industry on a much more deeper level. Some of some of us have seen our businesses um, greatly affected, even some wiped out, um, and others have seen their businesses on ice. So you know, there's a been a big holding up of, of getting back to normal practice. So um, my message really is, is one of hope that we are getting back to normal now, that um, the coming year is going to bring lots of new um, inspiration, lots of new opportunity. And really, all of this is about staying positive, um, keep meditating, do your self practice, stay strong. Um, and, and, you know, another thing I think is also that, that what this year has taught us is as hands-on therapists is this, it's not a bad thing to find um, new ways to earn an income to support the amazing work that you do. So, uh, you know, whether that means having, um, taking on maybe doing some, um, being an ambassador for a product range where you can build up um, a client base, which then gives you a passive income, uh, or you know you train in a, a system that you can, a supportive system, a self-care system that you can support clients with online. Now, with that in mind, we have actually developed um, a training program for guided meditation for therapists. And we are offering this training and these sessions you can facilitate virtually. So you can be anywhere in the world and you can facilitate these sessions like that. And they are proving to be really, really fantastic at a time when people are feeling particularly stressed, tense, they're feeling the anxiety. And, and I feel that's really going, it's going to increase next year. Now, what do I feel? I had to really, I had to really think about this one. Um, if I'm completely honest, I, I feel that, um, that we haven't been as supported as some other industries. 
Um, you know, therapists have said to me that the guide guidelines for therapists as we went into lockdown were very unclear. Um, many of them have fallen through the net of actually receiving any allowances or any support. Now, this doesn't just mean that they're not earning an income, but many of them also have rent to pay or, you know, they have they have their bills for their practice to pay. Um, and, you know, so from that perspective, it just felt like the government didn't completely understand the vital role of a massage therapist in, in helping clients maintain physical and emotional wellness at a time when our communities really need it. Through that, I feel we've become stronger. We've pulled together. Um, we've really put our thoughts about the content and how we need to deliver our message to government. Um, and I think we've pulled our socks up. So, you know, there's, there's, always, there's always something positive that comes out of a challenging situation. And, um, you know, as we open up again, we're opening up with much safer protocols in place. Um, many of us are thinking about, um, you know, health and hygiene and actually uh, putting better systems in place. So always there's, there's a positive outcome. For me, what I've seen here in Nottingham is the countless therapists actually coming together to help people in their communities. It's, it's really been quite phenomenal here in Nottingham. And I've seen therapists delivering food for people, collecting prescriptions for those that are self-isolating, um, providing help and assistance to those that really need it. So spirits are really soaring. They haven't been broken by this pandemic. If anything, it's, it's really actually raised our, our energy here. Um, and I'm very, very proud of what I've seen.